has no deductible medical insurance. Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> I mean that in a lovely, compassionate way. <laughs> Unfortunately, his tongue is in traction at the moment, Sean. But peace, peace, perfect peace prevails. I don't know about you, Sean, my dearest, dearest darling, but I feel like meditating. The trouble is, with talk shows, there's too much talk, there's too much idle tit chit chat. <laughs> Sure. Just a uh, many a slip, twist, twixt, the lip and the tip, the, t the tip. Maybe it's time to meditate. I think so, because we are telepathically in communication, sure. And times like this, before we go into a little meditation, on air, I mean, to light a beautiful fragrant candle. What I like to do now is... Put my feet in a lovely, relaxing herb bath. <laughs> Light a scented candle and play my Barry Manilow tapes. <laughs> Unfortunately, all my Barry Manilow tapes and records have been destroyed. It's a tragic story, which I'll tell you sometime. But I don't need Barry Manilow tapes because I've got Barry Manilow in my head, in my heart and in my home, day and night, ladies and gentlemen, noodling in my atrium, soothing my megastar nerves, Barry Manilow! That this heart of mine embraces all day through In that small cafe The park across the way The children's carousel The chestnut tree the wishing well And I'll be seeing you In every lovely summer's day In everything that's bright and gay I'll always think of you that way I'll find you in the morning and when the night is new, I'll be looking at the moon. Oh, but I'll be seeing you in every Summer's day in everything that's bright and gay. I'll always think of you that way. I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is new. I'll be looking at the moon 
Barry Manilow. Oh, Barry. Oh, I love you running your fingers up and down my ivories. Madge, the badge, please. Thank you. Quick sticks, quick sticks. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, darling. I'm going to tell you now, Barry, that although this is my own home, it feels a little bit like a talk show, but it isn't. I have to say, I'm not going to ask you silly, old-fashioned, stupid questions like how do you cure jet lag. Good. Instead, I'm going to tell you that you're a nice man, but you do Go make on. a lot of husbands jealous. Are you aware of that, Barry? Was, was your husband jealous? My husband jealous? It's tragic. <laughs> Is your husband still alive? My husband? Well, no, he's not. He's passed on, but he's probably still jealous. <laughs> You know, I, I came home to my home one night. This was when Norm, that was his name, was quite a well man before he'd had his first urological explosion. <laughs> and I, I came home. Terrible. And look, Barry, this is terrible. I heard, I came home unexpectedly, and I, I was just about to go into my bedroom, Sean, and I heard terrible, heavy breathing, huffing and puffing. I thought, what's going on in there? And I peeped through a crack in the door, and I saw my husband with something in his hand that I'd never seen there before. Not, not in broad daylight. Do you know what it was? It was his Masonic trowel. <laughs> something, a sort of Freemason's thing. And he was hacking away at your albums, oh darling. He was, he was scratching them and disfiguring them and tangling your beautiful tapes. Really, there's a lot of critics that would like to do that, too. Well, that. No, <laughs> they're wrong. You know, I feel maternal towards you, unlike some fans. You know, I've seen... No, I've seen women at concerts undressing you with their eyes, Barry. Whereas I'd like to undress you nicely and maternally. I'd like to... No, what I'd like to do... Can I say this? I will, of course, myself. <laughs> say anything I like. I'd like to grab you by your ankles, lift your little legs into the air, and dust your bottom with talcum powder. I do. And then... The crazed imaginings of a widowed megastar, if you like. <laughs> to me, it's a wholesome fantasy, Barry. It is, you see. Maybe, well, maybe after the show, I'll allow you to do that. No, Barry, <laughs> it's just a fantasy. You promised me. <laughs> Excuse me, but perhaps we could continue with that fascinating anecdote during the next commercial. Next, the man Dean Edna's been waiting for, Burt Reynolds.